Hey guys and welcome to the third episode of Brain and Spine. Today I'm going to be continuing on from the last video bringing to you guys part two of Anatomy of the Brain. In the last video I covered the brain's anatomy using the Tryon brain model starting with the reptilian brain deep inside then the limbic system and then finally on the outermost part of the brain the cerebrum. In today's video I'm going to talk about each component of the brain and attempt to make it as simple as possible for you guys to understand. So the brain, it has two halves, the left and the right. These halves are joined together by a bunch of fibers called the corpus callosum. The corpus callosum consists of white matter. Just a side note, there is white and gray matter. White matter is white, well, pinkish white, because of the lipids and fatty cells in the myelin sheath. And myelin sheath allows for messages to be sent quicker the normal. Grey matter is grey because it simply does not contain any myelin sheath. Simple. The corpus callosum is full of white matter to help convey quick communication of sensory, motor and cognitive messages across to the other half of the brain. The reason this is necessary is because of the crisscross wiring of nerves known as decussation that occurs in the brain or the spinal cord. This results in the right side of the brain controlling the left side of the body and the left side of the brain controlling the right side of the body. It's also why if an injury has occurred on one side of the brain, the opposite side of the body will present with either weakness or paralysis. The next structure, which is the thalamus, is situated directly below the corpus callosum. Its function is that of a relay station. Before sensory information such as auditory, visual, taste or touch is sent to the cerebrum, it's first sent to the thalamus for it to be sent to the correct area of the brain. Damage to the thalamus can result in each of those senses being interpreted wrongly, can alter the way pain is felt, it can also cause emotional changes depending on which area of the thalamus is damaged. The next structure is the hypothalamus. This is part of the limbic system, not as deep as the brainstem, but deeper than the cerebrum. Its function is to link the nervous system to the endocrine system, helping to maintain the body's internal balance or homeostasis. It's responsible for many metabolic processes in the body by producing releasing hormones. These hormones stimulate or inhibit other hormones from being released. Some of the body's vital processes that it helps to control are heart rate, body temperature, appetite and body weight, and sleep cycles. Moving on to the basal ganglia closely linked with the cerebrum and the hypothalamus plays an important role in voluntary movement, habitual movement, eye movement, emotions and learning. Damage to the basal ganglia can cause problems with controlling movement, posture and speech. Patients may present with slowness, rigidity, tremor or uncontrollable repeated movements. Conditions associated with basal ganglia dysfunction are addiction, OCD, Parkinson's disease or dystonia to name a few. The next structure is the brain stem situated at the inferior part of the brain helping to join the brain and the spinal cord together. It's split into three, the midbrain, pons and medulla oblongata. The midbrain situated at the top of the brainstem helps with vision and hearing, motor control, sleep and wake cycles and also helps to regulate temperature. The pons situated in the middle of the three helps with the control of respiration, taste, posture and balance. It also assists by relaying information from the cerebrum or the hypothalamus to the cerebellum. The last of the three is the medulla oblongata situated at the lower third of the brainstem. This contains the cardiac and respiratory centers which help with heart rate, breathing and blood pressure. As you probably guessed the brainstem is heavily involved in all the body's involuntary functions. The final structure we're going to talk about is the cerebellum. This funky little structure looks a lot like a cauliflower is situated just below the cerebrum. It plays an important part in smoothing out the movement. More specifically, it contributes to the precision and accurate timing of the movement. It does not initiate the movement. For someone who's had an injury to the cerebellum, they'll be able to produce the movement. However, it will have reduced coordination, poor timing and precision. Cerebellar ataxia is where there's a lack of muscle coordination that may affect speech, eye movement, walking and other voluntary movements. Simple test for coordination is a nose to finger test. In those with cerebellar injury, they may be slow, they may miss the target completely, or they may produce jerky movements. So guys, that is the anatomy of the brain. There are a few structures missed, 
However, I decided to discuss those that are closely related to physiotherapy and the type of patients that we treat. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Subscribe down below to follow for further quick, brief answers to questions you may have. Take care and I'll see you later. Thank you.